Today's topic is tangents and intersecting chords. Here there are two concepts. You have concepts based on angles and you have concepts based on lengths. So first we will take concepts based on angles and then we will come to concepts based on length because those are few and very few sums are there. Okay, But concepts based on angles like there are many sums. Let us see the first concept. circle with some center there is a point P there is a point P two tangents can be drawn to the circle from an external point two tangents can be drawn to a circle from an external point point. What is a tangent? It's a line which touches the circle. It does not cut. Like see now this would be a tangent. It is touching the circle at say z. Whereas this would be a secant. It is cutting the circle in two distinct points. So this would be a secant whereas this would be a tangent. So PQ and PR are the two tangents which we have drawn to the circle. Now the concept says PQ and PR are equal. We can even prove this but we are not going into the proof. We are just giving you the concept directly. PQ and PR will be equal. What is the reason for this? Tangents from an external point are equal. Now what I suggested is better you write down these concepts before I come to the numericals. So once you have the numericals, you can refer to the concepts and then try to solve the sum. That would be initial, uh, it will be easy at the beginning. Tangents from an external point. are equal. Tangents from an external point are equal. Now how does this help in angles? See if I join QR, the triangle will become isosceles triangle. So this angle and this angle would be equal. These two angles would be equal. Why angles opposite to Equal sides are equal. So this is the way this concept can help you in solving sums based on this topic. Though it appears to be a length concept, yes, it is a concept based on length, but it very much helps in angles also. So PQ is equaling PR, tangents from an external point are equal. So naturally angle PQR and angle QRP would be equal. That is angles opposite to equal sides are equal. Now the second concept. Circle with center O. This is my tangent. Say L1 is my tangent. This becomes the point of contact. Now center O is already fixed, isn't it? center O is already fixed while drawing the circle. This tangent has been drawn. So this point of contact is also fixed. What can we do with two fixed points at the most? We can join them. So let's join. Remember, I have no control over the angle. O is fixed center at the time of drawing the circle. Then this tangent, then this tangent is also drawn. So we have a fixed point of contact. 
Now, if I join these two fixed points, I am not drawing it in a particular angle. After joining, I try to measure this angle. Out of curiosity, I try to measure this angle. Angle OMR, we try to measure. You will realize that this angle has turned out to be 90. This concept is called radius is always perpendicular to tangent at the point of contact, not anywhere. If I join O to R or O to some point here, then the angle will not be 90. So radius is perpendicular to tangent at the point of contact. But while writing the reason in the exam, it is sufficient if you write radius perpendicular to tangent. radius perpendicular to tangent we can have tangent here also say l2 this is a point of contact join this even this angle will be 90 we can have a tangent like this then from the center you join it to the point of contact this angle will be 90 all these are same things radius perpendicular to tangent. So this is a second concept. Concept 3. Now observe this very carefully. It is easy but not as easy as concept 1 and 2. Consider a circle. This is the tangent. This is the point of contact. From here I draw any chord. From here I draw any chord. Now this angle which I have marked is known as the angle between the chord and the tangent. Of course at the point of contact. This angle is known as the angle between the chord and the tangent. Now this angle will equal some other angle. This angle between the chord and the tangent will equal some other angle formed by the chord on the other side. What I am trying to say, easier way to understand would be this side is now used up. Like we have already taken the angle. So this side is now used up. We are having this side free now. So now this chord can form one more angle, but it should form anywhere on the circumference. That's important, not here somewhere. So catch hold of the two endpoints of the chord. So angle, now these two angles will be equal. So angle formed between the chord and the tangent, angle formed between the chord and the tangent will equal the angle formed by the chord on the other side. Like this side is now used up. Here the angle le liya hai. It should form some other, uh, it should, the same chord should form another angle on this side now, other side, but it should be at the circumference. So if I catch hold of these two endpoints of the chord, they are forming this angle. Now this concept is known as alternate segment theorem. Alternate alternate segment theorem. We'll draw one more diagram for better understanding. This is the tangent. This is the point of contact.
the angle which I have marked is the angle formed between the chord and the tangent. Now this angle will equal some other, so this side is now used up. So this side is now free. So with the help of these two endpoints of the chord, we can form an angle anywhere on the circumference. Anywhere on the circumference. So this angle will equal this. What is this reason? Alternate segment theorem. One more diagram. This is a point of contact. Consider this angle this time. This is the angle between the tangent and the chord. So now which side is used up? This side. This side is used up. Right. Th this particular angle will now equal to some other angle formed by the chord on the other side. So this side is used to take this side now. But where should the angle be formed? How, how does a chord form an angle? With the help of two endpoints. But that angle should come at the circumference. Alternate segment theorem. So this completes your third concepts and now we will start with the numericals. Okay, question one. Circle CAB is a triangle and there is one tangent. Clear with the question? Circle CAB is a triangle and there is a tangent and which is the point of contact? A. Observe the angles which are already given. Now we are supposed to find angle ABC. Angle ABC is how much? Okay. Let's analyze. We can see one chord here. Now remember whatever three concepts you have been taught it is not that only those three will be applied. Whatever five concepts you studied in the topic of circles, they also can come very much here. So five plus three, eight. S secondly, basic geometry, you should remember some of the angles of a triangle is 180, linear pair and so on. Vertically opposite angles are equal, angles around the point is 360. So everything now comes mixed. Our target is angle ABC. How do we go about? Okay, since there is a tangent, some property of tangent naturally will be involved. Observe that BA is a chord. BA is a chord and this is a tangent. So this is the angle formed between the chord and the tangent. So this side is now used up. So this chord will form an angle, is forming an angle, see? somewhere on the circumference on the other side. So won't this angle be equal to 55? Won't this angle be equal to 55? What is the reason? Alternate segment theorem. Since this is the first sum, I will write it formally. Other sums we will solve in the diagram itself. We will write angle ACB is 55. No need to write degrees and all here, it's okay. Alternate Segment Theorem Alternate Segment Theorem 
okay now our target is to find angle cba 55 60 what will be cba some of the angles of a triangle see basic geometry is coming in the picture so now angle cba will be 180 minus bracket open 55 plus 60 So, how much this comes to? 115. So, it will be 65 degrees. So, angle CBA is 65 degrees. You should write units only for the final answer what is asked. Not for at each and every stage. And the reason would be sum of the angles of a triangle is 180. So this completes your first sum, fairly simple. Okay. Circle with center O, the second sum. Circle with center O, CP and CQ are the two tangents. Now certain things you will have to understand. Even if the question doesn't say CP and CQ are the tangents, at times if it is looking like a tangent and no data is absolutely provided, then naturally you'll have to take them as tangents. Okay, so CP and CQ would be the tangents. As it is evident, RQ and QP are equal and this angle is how much? 68 degrees. What is our requirement? Find angle QOP and angle QCP. So find angle QOP and find angle QCP. Okay, now since tangents are involved, some concepts of tangents would be there. Next circles also could be there. So let us see now. Can we find QOP directly? No. With the help of this 68, what I'm trying to say is this 68 is given. Can I find QOP directly with the help of this 68? No. So what we will do? We will go by angle chasing technique. What is angle chasing technique? Randomly find one or two or three angles and then revisit the question and see now can we get it okay since these two are the tangents op becomes my radius center and p is the point of contact so op becomes my radius and cp is my tangent so this angle will be 90 degree now whether this will help us or not is not our concern we will have to find some angles and see angle oqc will be 90. What is the reason? Radius perpendicular to tangent. Radius perpendicular to tangent. Okay. Now they have given QR is equaling QP. QR is equaling QP. So and this angle is 68. So how much will be this angle? So angle R, here we can name angle R, Prefer it's better to name angle with three letters but since here R doesn't create any confusion, we can name it with single letter. It will be 180 minus 68 upon 2. Base angles of isosceles triangle, QR and QP are equal. So angles opposite to them also will be equal. So now this angle and this angle, both of them will be equal which will be equal to 180 minus 68 upon 2 so that comes to 112 upon 2 that is 56 so this is 56 this is also 56 this angle now we have found good number of angles let us revisit the question find angle QOP QOP yes now we can find it look at angle QOP what is the mouth of the arc? PQ. Mouth of the arc is PQ. And look at angle QRP. Look at angle QRP. What is the mouth of the arc? See QRP. What is the mouth of the arc? Same PQ. But this angle is at the circumference and this angle is at the center. So what do we have? 
angle at the center is twice the angle at circumference. So this angle QOP will be 56 into 2 that is 112 degrees and what reason will we write? Angle at the center is twice the angle at circumference. So we will mark it. Remember always to mark the angles. They will lead you towards the other required unknown angles. Now we are left with QCP. Angle QCP. The diagram is going outside the circle. When the diagram goes outside the circle, some of the angles of a triangle is 180 very likely to be used or some of the angles of a quadrilateral is 360. This property is also very likely to be used, especially when the diagram goes outside the circle. Now look at QOPC. Observe quadrilateral QOPC. This is 112. This angle is 90. What we found in the very beginning is now helping us. This angle is 90. So three angles of the quadrilateral are known. Can't we find the fourth angle? So angle C would be or angle QCP would be 360 minus 112 plus 90 plus 90. And what reason we will give here? Sum of the angles of a quadrilateral is 360. So 112 plus 180. minus 292. This will be how much? 68 degrees. Clear with this? But be very careful. Now some of you may feel we could have got 68 right in the beginning by using alternate segment theorem. That will not work. See, this is the chord and this is a tangent. There is no angle formed between the chord and the tangent. In the sense, this 68 degree what you can see is an angle between the two chords. So don't feel oh, this is 68, so this also will be 68. And secondly, diagram is going outside the circle. How will alternate segment theorem work? You know, the angle has to come somewhere on the circumference if you recollect concept number 3 which I taught you. So this has to work out and it's just a matter of coincidence that this angle works out to be same as angle RQP. So this completes your question 2. Question 3. Given a circle with center O. There is a tangent and the point of contact is P. Is the data clear? And this angle what is marked is 60 degree. We need to find angle PRQ. We need to find angle PRQ. Now it is a single angle sum. If it is a single angle sum carrying 3 to 4 marks, definitely there will be 2 to 3 angles before it. So it's better we go, so that means PRQ is not going to come directly in any case. So we will have to go by angle chasing technique and randomly find 2 to 3 angles, whatever we can and then revisit the question. Okay, there is no diameter. Tangents from an external point are equal also cannot be used because there are two tangents are not there. Radius perpendicular to tangent we can use provided we join OP. Okay. But if you observe this is a tangent. The point of contact is P. And QP is the chord. So nicely they have given the angle between the chord and the tangent. So probably alternate segment theorem can come in the picture. So what we can do is this chord QP this chord QP will throw another angle at the circumference anywhere at the circumference. So this 60 will now equal, let this point be say Z. This 60 will now equal angle Z. The reason is 
alternate segment theorem. So we had to construct this for alternate segment theorem to work. No need to show this as dotted, you can show dark line, no problem. So we can say angle QZP is equaling 60. Angle QZP will equal 60. Reason is alternate segment theorem. Now what we want to find PRQ, this we have to find. Nice. Now the spine of the sum is broken. Just observe PZQR is a cyclic quadrilateral concepts taught to you in the topic of circles. Clearly PZQR is a cyclic quadrilateral. So angle QRP or PRQ will be 180 minus 60 that is 120. What is the reason? Opposite angles of a cyclic quadrilateral always add up to 180. Opposite angles of a cyclic quadrilateral is 180. So sum is over. Now we can modify this. We can add some spice to it. Find angle. So we are just extending the sum. Find angle um, OPQ. Find angle OPQ. Also find angle POQ. So to find angle OPQ, Naturally, we will have to join OP and we want to find angle OPQ. So it is this angle what we are supposed to find. How do we get it? This is the radius. OP is the radius. This is the tangent. So remember, radius is always perpendicular to tangent. So angle OP, let this point be say M. So angle OPM the angle between the radius and the tangent. This particular angle will definitely be 90 radius perpendicular to tangent out of which this angle is already given as 60 degrees. So what will be the leftover angle that is angle OPQ that would be 30. So angle OPQ would be 30 degrees. Now they said find angle POQ. Angle POQ will be how much? Angle at the center is twice the angle at circumference. So look at angle POQ. POQ. What is the mouth of the arc? PQ. Then angle PZQ. What is the, if you look at angle PZQ, what is the mouth of the arc? PQ. Now you may be wondering what is this mouth of the arc? I have explained in the topic of circles. Here also I will tell you. Okay. So angle PZQ, the mouth of the arc is same. Angle POQ, mouth of the arc is same. So angle at the center will be twice the angle at circumference. So this angle will be 120. Now what I mean to say mouth of the arc means like this. Suppose if this is the angle, if you have angle ABC, this becomes the mouth of the arc in my way of teaching. Okay, if this is the angle, then this becomes the mouth of the arc. So now if you look at angle PZQ, PZQ, this becomes the mouth of the arc. Okay, so this is an easier way to understand. So many properties were applied here, alternate segment theorem, radius perpendicular to tangent, cyclic quadrilateral properties, then angle at the center is twice the angle at circumference. So you might like this sum. Question 4. O is the center of the circle. BA is the diameter. So it will be a straight line. TA is a tangent. We need to find X. So it's a single angle sum. Only one angle needs to be found out. 
so definitely there will be at least two angles before it at least if the sum is carrying three to four marks so we should now with the help of this 64 we cannot find x directly so what should we do angle chasing technique now because this is a tangent and this is the radius so this angle will come 90 angle OAT will be 90 what is the reason radius perpendicular to tangent okay diagram is going outside the circle that means some of the angles of a triangle is 180 or some of the angles of a quadrilateral is 360 high chances of being used so let me first use try and use some of the angles of a triangle 180 so if this is x then the triangle which is formed is BAT we have triangle B A T this angle is 90 if we can find this angle that is this then our job is done some of the angles of a triangle how to get this angle this angle will be 32 angle at the center is twice the angle at circumference look at this angle let this point be say Z observe angle AOZ observe angle AOZ what is the mouth of the arc AZ okay so observe angle AOZ the mouth of the arc is AZ observe angle ABZ observe angle ABZ what will be the mouth of the arc again AZ but this is at the center and this one is at the circumference so angle at the center is twice the angle at circumference so circumference will be half so this is 32 now consider triangle BAT consider triangle BAT this angle is 90 this is 32 how do we find X 180 minus 90 plus 32 so never forget basic geometry it will enter anywhere in these sums in fact, sometimes the sum may start with basic geometry. So 180 minus 122, that is 58. Correct? Have I subtracted correctly? Yes. How can we slightly modify this sum? We can ask something new. Find angle OZB. Let's find angle OZB. How much? 32. OB equaling OZ. Radii of same circle. So these two are equal. So naturally angles opposite to equal sides also will be equal. So if this is 32, this also will be 32. If we wish to find angle OZT also, how would we find angle OZT? 180 minus 32 linear pair 180 minus 32 linear pair so this way we can make quite a few modifications to the standard sums this takes care of a question 4 okay question 5 O is the center of the circle TC is the tangent BA is a chord and BAT is a straight line the data is given O is the center of the circle BA is a chord stretched up to any point T and TC is a tangent we need to find angle BOA so definitely we will have to join BOA question mark sometimes this question can be framed Find the angle subtended by the chord BA at the center. Find the angle subtended by the chord BA at the center. So subtended means formed. So naturally we will have to find angle BOA only. Again this is a single angle sum. So there will be two or three angles possibly before this. If the sum is carrying three to four marks. So we will go by angle chasing technique. Okay, randomly find two angles, three angles, again revisit this question. 
Okay, now some angles are given here. This is 36, this is 48. We can observe a triangle here. C, A, T. We are able to observe a triangle here. C, A, T. So we can find this angle. Sum of the angles of a triangle is 180. So angle C, A, T will be 180 minus 36 plus 48. So 180, 14. How much this comes to? 96. So have a habit to mark the angle in the diagram. And diagrams have to be drawn in pen. Absolutely no problem. Draw a big, neat and clear diagram then automatically your mind will think for it. If you draw a small and cluttered diagram, it will become very difficult and messy. So this angle CAT cat is now how much? 96. What is our target? BOA. Okay, let's see. Now since there is some tangent here, some properties related to tangent can be used like radius perpendicular to tangent, alternate segment theorem, so now you look here, TC is a tangent, AC is a chord. So what does this 48 represent? It represents the angle between the tangent and the chord. So this angle, if I try to use alternate segment theorem, the chord can throw one more angle on the other side and then they will be equal. But where is that other side? Okay, this side. This side is already used up, angle is already formed here and that angle should be where at the circumference if you recall your alternate segment theorem. So for which we will have to join CB. The reason what inspires me to do so is because this is an angle 48 and it is the angle formed between the chord and the tangent most likely alternate segment theorem will be used. For that, the two endpoints of the chord should throw an angle anywhere at the circumference. So this is already done. If I just join CB, alternate segment theorem will get activated. Now angle CBA, angle CBA will be 48. The reason is alternate segment theorem. Now what is our target? We are far away from our target. Target is BOA. So this is my O. Okay. So BOA is now still remaining what we need to find. So how do we go about it? Can I find BOA directly with the help of available data? No. Okay. So we again follow angle chasing. This is 96. So what can be done with this 96? We can find this angle. Just go on randomly finding the angles. Use basic geometry like linear pair, some of the angles of a triangle, whatever you can work out. Ultimate target is BOA. So certain problems are not too direct and easy. So we'll have to work out many angles. Angle CAB. Angle CAB will be how much? 180 minus 96. That works out to be 84. The reason for this will be linear pair. How much was angle CBA? 48 because of alternate segment theorem. Yes, now we are closer. Now angle BCA can be found out. Angle B, C, A can be found out. How? Sum of the angles of a triangle is 180. So this angle, angle B, C, A will be 180 minus 48 plus 84. that comes to 48. 
so angle ac bca angle bca turns out to be 48 now how much would be angle boa twice of it because angle at the center is twice the angle at the circumference observe angle boa ba is the mouth of the arc then look at angle bca look at angle bca what is the mouth of the arc ba but this is at the circumference and this is at the center so angle at the center is twice the angle at the circumference so this works out to be so angle boa will be finally 96 and we are done with this sum okay here question 6 angle aob is 140 angle apc is 80 pa and pc are the two tangents we need to find angle bac we need to find angle bac so again it's a single angle sum so there will be at least two three angles before this before we reach bac so keep in mind our target is bac so we go by angle chasing technique randomly two three angles we find and then see this again this is 140 so this will be 70 angle acb will be 70 angle at the center is twice the angle at the circumference and the mouth of the arc is the same by this time now you are well versed with it aob mouth of the arc is ab acb mouth of the arc is ab so this is 70 okay what else can be done now pa and pc are the two tangents pa and pc are the two tangents so this angle will be equal to this angle angles opposite to equal sides are equal so pa and pc are the two tangents so naturally these two angles will be equal remember first concept when i taught you i said this is a length concept actually but it will help us in angles and now here it is helping so each of these angles will be how much 180 minus 80 upon 2 that will be 50 so this is 50 and this also will be 50 what is our target angle bac okay now see pa is a tangent ca is a chord pa is a tangent ca is a chord so this 50 degrees what you can see is the angle formed between the tangent and the chord so this side is now used up this side is now used up so ac can throw one more angle on this side but at the circumference so which is that angle it is throwing forming abc so angle abc will be 50 alternate segment theorem oh now we are done now we want to find angle b a c so this is 70 this is 50 this will be 60 sum of the angles of a triangle so angle b a c will be 180 minus 50 plus 70 so that is 180 minus 120 so that would be how much 60 degrees so is now this sum is complete now let us have look at some length concepts we saw concepts pertaining to angles now we will see concepts pertaining to length at times and these are quite easy and many a times if you see in the last five to seven years about i think last seven years three to four times they have asked direct sum based on length concepts and which is really good i mean even average students can score in this a 
ए बी एंड पी क्यू आर टू इंटरसेक्टिंग कॉर्ड्स ए बी एंड पी क्यू आर टू इंटरसेक्टिंग कॉर्ड्स दे मीट एट पॉइंट जेड द प्रॉपर्टी सेस क्यू जेड इन टू जेड पी इज इक्वलिंग ए जेड इन टू जेड बी क्यू जेड इन टू जेड पी इज इक्वलिंग ए जेड इन टू जेड बी दिस कैन बी इजिली प्रूव बाय सिमिलैरिटी इफ यू ज्वाइन क्यू ए एंड बी पी यू प्रूव द टू ट्राइंगल सिमिलर बाय ए ए टेस्ट दैट इज यू नो दिस वन वर्टिकली ऑपोजिट एंगल्स आर इक्वल एंड एंगल्स इन द सेम मार्क दैट विल गिव यू दीज टू ट्राइंगल्स सिमिलर टेक द रेशियो ऑफ ऑल द करेस्पॉन्डिंग साइड क्रॉस मल्टीप्लाई एंड यू विल गेट दिस I suggest you write down these properties before we come to numericals. It will be easier for you to grasp the numericals. This is known as internal intersecting chord property. This reason is what you would write in the exam. Internal intersecting chord property. Comfortable with this? we have ab as one chord and pq as another chord we have ab as one chord and pq as the second chord now these two chords are not intersecting but when we extend them when we produced ab produced and pq produced will meet at some point let that point be p so the property says pb into pa will equal pq oh sorry p already has been taken here so i will take this as z so you have chord ab and you have chord pq chord ab when produced goes in this direction chord pq when produced goes in this direction they meet at some point z eventually the property says zb into za is equaling zq into zp so how to remember this out into whole outer portion into the entire thing whatever can possible exist that is za that is the maximum so out into whole is equaling out into whole so it will be zb Out into whole maximum kitna hai Z A is equaling Z Q out into whole so into Z P. This is known as external intersecting chord property. comfortable with this so this completes your second concept based on length concept 3 circle any random point p now we will draw one tangent and one secant from p we draw a tangent so let the point of contact be a we do not draw another tangent we draw a secant this cuts the circle in two points so one tangent one secant both originating from the same external point let us see what the concept says again this can be proved by similarity it says tangent square so it will be pa 
square because pi is a tangent here is equaling out into whole the whole this go will go on extending not like that up to here so tangent square is equaling outer portion into the entire maximum so pa square is equaling pm into pn pa square is equaling pm into pn so tangent square is equaling out into whole this is known as tangent secant theorem in the exam this kind of crisp reason you are expected to write tangent c hyphen secant theorem so this you are comfortable so one tangent one secant both originating from the same external point the theorem says tangent square is equaling out into whole so in this context it will be pa square is equaling out into whole so is pm into pn is equaling pa square and this is known as tangent secant theorem circle data says cb and ae are the two chords ab is 5 bd is 4 cd is 9 so cd is 9 so we will mark it 9 be careful the full thing is not 9 na huh? only cd is 9 bd is 4 ab is 5 so it is not arc ab when they say is segment ab if they want to say arc ab then they will specify arc ab so this would be 5 we are supposed to find ae okay a center is not given of course we can take the center no problem in that we could in fact join oe and say it is a radius and all but since two chords are intersecting what comes to our mind is internal intersecting chord property which we just studied so what does that say cd into db is equaling ed into da so we know this we know this cd we don't know we can find that but the problem is da also we don't know so two things are unknown now ad is unknown de is also unknown so how will i apply the property this angle is given 90 some purpose if this is 90 can't we apply so this also will be 90 vertically opposite angles now we can easily apply pythagoras theorem to triangle adb see angle cd is 90 so angle adb also will be 90 vertically opposite angles now we can at least compute ad by pythagoras theorem otherwise why would they have given this angle as 90 so ad square will be 5 square minus 4 square is 25 minus 16 that is 9 ad is what 3 now we can apply internal intersecting chord property so it is cd into db is equaling ad into de so cd is 9 db is 4 so ad we just now found out ad is 3 into de So it will be nine into four upon three. Avoid multiplying these two. These numbers are small, but avoid the numbers are big. So better get three down and then simplify. So DE will be twelve. Hold on, this is not our final answer. What is asked is AE. This is AE. Now how much was AD? Three. How much is DE now? Twelve. So what would be A E? Three plus twelve, that is fifteen. And what reason we will write for this? Internal intersecting chord property. This completes question number seven. Okay. 
सर्कल विथ ए बी एज द डायामीटर पी टी इज अ टेंजेंट इट इज गिवेन ए बी इज अ डायामीटर पी टी इज द टेंजेंट एंड देन दिस पी सी वुड बी द सीकेंट मेजरमेंट्स आर गिवेन सी डी इज सेवन पॉइंट एट पी डी इज फाइव एंड पी बी इज फोर we need to find pt and ab we need to find pt and ab now recollect this is an external point we can see one tangent and we can also see one secant remember originating from the same point the theorem which we just covered tangent secant theorem so we can easily apply that direct application so pt is a tangent from the same point p pc is a secant so we have pt square so now look at pt and pc for the time being you forget ap so pt square will be out into whole so that will be pd into pc pd is 5 pc will be 7.8 plus 5 that is 12.8 which we will write it as 128 upon 10 that's important whenever you have a decimal try to put in a fraction things will be much easier many things will get cancelled try to work with decimals most of the times it will be difficult so pt square is pd into pc so okay that we have substituted pc will be 7.8 plus 5 that is 12.8 so that is 128 upon 10 now see how beautifully this gets cancelled and we get pt square is 64 so pt will be how much square root of 64 that is 8 no need to write in this topic plus or minus it is length na so it won't be negative so pt would be 8 so now we will mark pt as 8 we never know this may be of some use for the further sub parts so mark it as 8 okay now we want to find ab look at pa and pc so ab is a chord it is extended to point p cd is a chord extended to point p so which concept will come here external intersecting chord property external intersecting chord property will come or we can again use tangent secant theorem also see we can take pt as a tangent because now we know pt initially it was unknown so from the same external point p pt is a tangent and ta is a secant the way pc was a secant similarly pa is very much a secant and pt is our tangent and now we know the length of this tangent so if you want you can go by this pt square is equaling pb into pa what is the reason tangent secant theorem pt square is equaling pb into pa here also for this statement you will have to write the reason in brackets so we can go by that or just to get a different exposure we will go by external intersecting chord property so ab is our chord cd is our chord ab is produced meeting at p cd produced meeting at p so what we can do is we can say pb out into whole into pa is equaling pd into pc that is also fine what's the reason external intersecting chord property now pb is 4 pa let it be like that pd is 5 into pc pc is how much 12.8 that is 128 upon 10 this will get cancelled so pa will now equal 64 upon 
So that works out to be 16. But be careful, no, I can't double underline this because PA is not required. What was required was AB. So now it is too simple. PA is 16. PB is 4. What is required? AB. So how much will be AB? See, AB was required here. So AB will be 16 minus 4. That is 12. We can modify this sum. Instead of asking you find AB, they could have tricked you by saying find the radius of this circle. So one wonders now how do we find the radius, which property? Simple, just find AB, which is not any ordinary chord, it is the diameter. Once you find AB by normal routine process, so if AB is 12 and AB is given to be the, uh, AB was given to be the diameter, so what would be the radius? Half of it, so radius would be 6. So this completes with sum number 8. Just one more sum and we are done with this topic.
Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and 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 go ahead and